This morning while watering my lettuce and greens out here in the garage, I thought, well, I need to do some picking up, decluttering around here and get some things cleaned up just so I could do a video for YouTube. And then I went, well, let's just show the reality of it. Clutter does happen. This is shelf number two that I had set up. As you can see, the lettuce needs to be harvested. These are the ragged jack kale that I moved over from that, and it needs to be harvested. I've got microgreens that need to be harvested. But sitting down here on the floor, I've got the box from the garlic that I just planted in the garden. And I've got some flower pots. Have to have my bucket of water that I love chlorine to dissipate from. Over here, I have aloe plants. And I started with one aloe plant and then I separated it and separated it. You're gonna see aloe plants pretty much everywhere out here. This is the table where I have all my watering things. And once again, it needs to be cleaned up and straightened up. This is rack number one. The lettuce is growing great. Really needs to be cut back, harvested. And we will be having salads for lunch and dinner today. This is more lettuce that I've grown out in the greenhouse. I have transplanted some from this into other bins, but this is what was left in the original container. Got some cilantro here. And this is Cuban oregano. I do have oregano in the garden, but when I bought this, I got to thinking, Cuban oregano, I wonder if it will make it through the winter here in zone seven. The answer to my search was, no, it won't bring it in. Down here, as you can see, more aloe plants. These are all, once again, from that one aloe. Anyway, things are growing great. Things need to be harvested. I'm going to go ahead and harvest a lot of this today to make salads. I'll show you the results of my harvest, and I will show you what the salads look like. In reviewing my video I did earlier today on my growth of things in my garage, I thought I need to give some more details. So here goes with a few more details. This first bin of lettuce that needs picking the lettuce that's in the front is black seeded Simpson. The lettuce that's in the back and almost as tall as the shelves are is red romaine lettuce. Both of these have been picked from already. They're the ones I picked on Thanksgiving day for making salad to take to a relative's house. This over here is bronze Mennonite lettuce. Mennonite, however you want to say it. it once again, needs picking. This is the Red Russian Ragged Jack Kale. Also needs picking. It's great having kale growing here in the garage. It just means that if I'm wanting to make a soup or something that has casserole, has kale in it, I just come out and pick some. This is more bronze mininette that's just getting a really good start in this pan. It was transplanted from the one other crowded pan that I showed on the first rack. Down here, these are Crest microgreens. Growing up as a child, we would have cream of watercress soup. We'd go down to the creek and pick the watercress and bring it home, and my mother would make cream of watercress soup with it. Over here, our broccoli microgreens. These are great. I mean, I can just cut them off and throw them in a salad. And yes, they are tall. They are ready to harvest. Down here, you may have noticed the orange towel. 
Underneath the orange tile is a grow tray with paper towels in it. These are chia seeds, just chia seeds from my kitchen. I didn't buy special sprouting seeds from one of the companies because I had so many chia seeds already. These two trays have in them some black seeded Simpson lettuce and some other lettuces. What I've done is watered them. This pot on top is simply to give weight, to weight them down, hold them down so that they'll sprout. Over here is the Grand Rapids leaf lettuce. You can see where I harvested some a couple days ago for salads for lunch. I still haven't figured out what these stray little things here are. I think they're kind of kale. They just popped up in the middle of the lettuce. On this shelf, I have dwarf blue scotch kale. Don't let the dwarf name fool you. As you can see, this one plant is quite a bit larger. And I do have a habit of growing kale in the garden it says it's dwarf and it will get like two feet tall. Uh, kale is definitely one thing I've learned to grow. This is dwarf scotch curled kale. Once again, plenty of kale to come out here and pick a few greens at a time to add to soups and casseroles. This is that mixed bin of lettuce where I just sprinkle different seeds. If you look very closely, you can see a bit of mold starting to grow. So I will be taking a solution of two tablespoons of hydrogen peroxide to a quart of water and spraying this to kill off that mold and prevent any problems. But basically, those are the details on what's growing here in the garage. And as usual, if you have any questions, just ask below. I will try to get to them and answer them for you. So this is the bowl of lettuce that I've picked from these two bins that I had. I've only picked these two bins so far. I know the lettuce bowl doesn't look very impressive, but if you take a tape measure to it, it is 11 inches wide. And the bowl is seven inches deep. Maybe it made you dizzy moving my iPhone around. I just want you to know this is packed in here tightly. It settled as I was cutting it. The good thing about this lettuce is it won't have to be washed. There's no dirt on it. There are no insects. And it's good to go. The other good thing is these two bins We'll do like they did after Thanksgiving Day and they'll grow back again. So we're going to have plenty more lettuce to eat out of just these two bins. Now that I've harvested the large leaf lettuce, I am going to be doing these microgreens. In order to harvest it, I'll be using this knife, super sharp, and it just flows right through, cuts right through the microgreens. This is a knife that was recommended by On The Grow on YouTube. Great channel to watch if you're interested in growing and harvesting microgreens. So I will get busy with the cutting of the greens. So I harvested the Grand Rapids leaf lettuce microgreens. Those are over here. As you can see, quite a few of those over here. I have some broccoli microgreens. The microgreens are shown to be 10 times more nutritious than eating a developed broccoli plant. Here I have some arugula. I've kept it separate because it does tend to be spicy and I don't want to over spice the salads. But this is part of my harvest for today. Now on to making salads from it. Okay, so it's time to make the salads for lunch. I've combined the larger leaf lettuces, added on top of that some of the Grand Rapids microgreens, 
and then some other broccoli microgreens. On the very top, you'll see just a few leaves here of arugula. Don't want to overdo it. We're doing a fruity salad today. We're going to add some mandarin orange slices. called trying to do it one-handed what's normally a two-handed job in addition to the mandarin orange slices we've got green grapes that have been cut in halves and quarters depending upon the size of the grape fixing one salad for myself and one for my husband. He knows every salad with me is an adventure and he never knows what I'm going to throw on it next. So speaking of throwing on it next, I'm going to sprinkle on some sunflower seeds. These are toasted. They do have some salt on them, but they're not heavily salted. And then we break all the rules of the whole food but this is plant-based. We have some sugar pecans. We go very sparingly with the sugar pecans. Now for dressing for these salads, I'll let my husband pick whatever dressing he wants. I'll be using my, what most people would call a honey mustard. It's actually maple syrup and mustard dressing because I don't do honey. It is a vegan dressing, very easy to mix up and make. I will try to do a video on that one soon. But the salads are ready. Just have to add dressing and eat up. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. And I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe. Leave any comments in the comments below. Any questions you have, I'll try my best to answer them. And also, if you hit that bell, it will notify you of my next update on my Whole Foods plant-based growing at home in your garden and in your garage journey.